Are there any symbols you've had to lose? Like, are you keeping the bunny? Um, <laughs> we, we keep the bunny, absolutely. Yeah. Hi, I'm Stephanie Patrick, executive editor at Adweek, and I'm here with Rachel Weber, who's the chief marketing officer of Playboy. And we're at Brand Week in Palm Springs, where Rachel's going to be speaking. It's great to have you here. Thanks, Thanks so for much joining for having me. Yeah, so to start, I want to know what are you most excited about that you're working on at Playboy right now? I joined Playboy uh, almost a year ago. Uh, and the thing that really motivated me to join uh, was this opportunity to take this big, iconic brand that has global recognition around the world and really work to make it relevant for audiences today. And to do that through products and services and the storytellers that we hand our platform over to and to really kind of really dig in and understand what's at the core of the Playboy brand. And the way we articulate our mission is to create a culture where all people can pursue pleasure. And that has a set of underlying beliefs. There's more civil rights work to be done to create a world in which all people can pursue pleasure. Um, that playfulness and a playful tone helps open minds. Um, that a healthy relationship to sex and sexuality um, is really part of leading a fulfilling life. Um, so to understand the core DNA and then to work to turn that into the right products and services and formats um, that people are going to engage in today. Yeah. That mantra, sort of the pursuit of pleasure for yeah. all, is that historic or is that something new that you guys have come up with? Yeah, so that framing and that articulation mm -hmm. of the brand mission uh, is one that we developed over the last year, uh, but we developed it by really digging into uh, an investigation of the DNA of the brand. Um, so we spent a lot of time uh, reading the, the historic writings of the Playboy <laughs> philosophy, um, really digging into understanding the advocacy that the Playboy brand did and the Playboy Foundation did over the last uh, six and a half decades. Um, everything from advocating for LGBTQ rights to uh, abortion rights to uh, the decriminalization of cannabis um, are things that have been um, part of, of why Playboy has existed. Yeah. Um, and um, there's certainly elements to the brand that are not relevant to mm -hmm. today and there's symbols that are somewhat anachronistic um, and we are being very open and thoughtful about how we even either evolve those through creativity yeah. um, or don't take those on the journey. Yeah. Are there any symbols you've had to lose? Like, are you keeping the bunny? Um, <laughs> we, we keep the bunny, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but the role of the bunny is one that, we are, um, that we're working on um, and that we work really closely with those who serve in that bunny role um, in our experiences. I'd love to know what innovation you see on the horizon yeah. that has the potential to change the way you're doing business. We think a lot about all innovation that provides more inclusion mm -hmm. um, and more representation. Um, that's both in actual you know, technology innovation, um, things like the codeless movement that's going on right now where um, you see the kind of democratization of product development. For those who don't know, tell me more about the codeless movement. I think there are a number of companies and communities out there who are building toolkits um, that just basically provide um, the systems and infrastructure uh, for anyone to go on and build a website, design a website, um, build uh, digital product functionality. Um, so it's less about having to actually learn to code um, and it's more about um, here's the um, kind of sandbox to play mm -hmm. in um, and then they can build upon that. That's really cool. So for a brand, you can bring community into the building of the product, not yeah. just the consumption of it. So here's a hard question, yeah. but what keeps you up at night? You know, I think that uh, in today's day and age, when you have uh, one of the world's most iconic brands, um, and really any brand for that matter, uh, in a world of social platforms and um, both digital and experiential touch points, every single touch point that uh, you put out there to the world matters in consumers' lives. And it's a, it's a lot to wrangle all of those. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, particularly when you're going through, um, when you're taking a brand that's been around for 65 years, there's certainly tons of consumer touch points that you're not actively um, creating today. Playboy and, and really with any brand out there today, I think it is, um, you know, it behooves you to acknowledge to consumers um, which, to, you know, the, the journey that you're taking them on. Yeah. Um, and to always be very open with them about um, and to acknowledge that every single one of the experiences that you create um, is one that represents the relationship that you're building with yeah. your audiences. Okay, last question for you. What is the best piece of advice that you've mm -hmm. either received or you've given? The best piece of advice I've ever received was to hire people smarter than you. Um, I think <laughs> I your, love that. your team is everything. Yeah. 
uh, and your ability to um, your the opportunity to learn from your team mm -hmm. also um, is just one of the greatest gifts. Yeah, that's great, Rachel yeah. Weber. Thank you so much for joining thank us you today. For me. I can't wait to hear you speak, and thank you all for joining us for Top of Mind.